NUS has a lot of campus hostel options, from halls of residence to residential colleges to student residences and houses, with three hostels being recent additions. I know it all sounds very similar and confusing, so that is why I did the number crunching and research, ventured all around NUS, and here I am telling you everything you need to know about hostels in NUS. First off, let's talk about the different types of hostels, starting off with halls of residence. These are what you would envision when thinking about staying in a university dorm overseas. The late nights, the partying, drinking, all sorts of weird shit. Well, at least the first two. Alcohol is prohibited and there are regulations to clamp down on the funny business. So no weird and uncomfortable camp rituals here anymore, rest assured. All the halls are located on the main campus as you can see here. They are Raffles Hall, Yusuf Hall, Tomasic Hall, Kentridge Hall, Shears Hall, and King Edward VII Hall. We shall begin with Yusuf and Tomasic Halls. They are next to the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and a short walk away from Supper Stretch, which has the famous Alaman and Fengsheng Nasi Lama. Yusuf Hall has very competitive sports CCAs, well-performing arts CCAs, and welcome those who try hard to improve. Meanwhile, the Masik Hall also has very competent sports CCAs, always fighting with Yusuf Hall for the overall champion position in the Interhall games. In terms of their rooms, they both have very similar constructs. Their single rooms have a very wide desk with ample storage shelves above. The bed is of a decent size, the room is big enough to not feel claustrophobic, and there is plenty of wardrobe space to keep all your clothing and luggage as well. Their double sharing room looks absolutely spacious with a slightly longer L-shaped desk and similar looking shelf storage. The lack of a partition between the desks make the room look bigger but there is little privacy between the two sides. There is a large parking lot in front so residents have to walk a bit to get to the nearest campus building. Next up are Kenridge Hall and Shears Hall. They are just a stone's throw away from business school and a short walk away from the School of Computing. Both halls are known for their strong party culture and it is best to join all the engagement and orientation camps if you want to get in. Kentridge Hall has some of the best media production teams and dance crews and are decent in sports CCAs as well. Shears Hall is also very similar to Kentridge Hall with strong arts CCAs. So if you're the introverted sort or want to focus on your GPA, these two halls might not be your go-to choice. Kentridge Hall and Shears Hall only offer single rooms and they are of decent size. If you shift the bed towards the windows, it opens up a lot of the room for whatever you want to do. The desk is very long, so you can put a good amount of paperwork, books, and even an entire setup if you like. After these is Raffles Hall, which is right next to engineering. It is one of the more chill halls with decent sports and arts CCAs and a wide variety of cultural CCAs. CCA commitments are not as fierce as they only take the top 4 in hall points to determine eligibility for further stay. The single rooms are decently large and rather wide, with a long L-shaped desk. There is a good amount of open space that can accommodate visiting guests, and the storage cabinet can also fit in quite a bit of luggage as you can see here. What pales in comparison though are their double sharing rooms. The desk layout is more cramped, and there doesn't seem to be a way to shift the beds for added space. There seems to be fewer shelf storage and closet storage as well. Overall, the room feels very narrow and tight. The final hall of residence is King Edward VII Hall, located opposite to Prince George's Park residences which we will get to later. It is a short bus ride from Kent Ridge MRT and is a hall with a lot of elevation change. It is one of the chillest halls, also taking only the top 3-4 to four CCAs for hall points. There were only images provided on the NUS website, but from the looks of it, both single and double rooms are plenty spacious, though that sense of space could be due to the fisheye lens used. Huge shout out to Bolhart for making a comprehensive post on halls, it helped me out a lot on research. Give the post a look and the guy an upvote if you can. Moving on to the next type of accommodation, residential colleges. These hostels have a greater focus on academics, replacing some of the NUS general elective modules with their own, where each RC has a different theme of focus. All of the RCs are located in the upper left part of the campus, and with the exception of Ridgeview RC, the rest are located in University Town. These are RC4, College of Alice and Peter Tan, Tambusu College, NUS College Cinnamon Wing, and NUS College West Wing. 
West Wing's location is unclear except that it is in Yale and US. We shall start off with Ridgeview Residential College, located in the middle of both the Faculty of Engineering and the Faculty of Science. It is one of the largest and oldest residential colleges in NUS and has a team of sustainability in their general elective modules. Its strategic location makes it very convenient for traveling throughout the campus. RVRC has a humbly sized single room, and as for their double sharing rooms, although a little tight, provides sufficient desk space. I'm guessing it used the old Kenridge Hall buildings from way back. Moving on to College of Alice and Peter Tan and RC4, formerly known as Angsana and Kaya RCs. Both RCs share the same canteen and have the same building style. CAPT focuses on community engagement while RC4 focuses on systems thinking. Judging by the pictures, the rooms look rather small, but I have visited one before and, personally speaking, they seem pretty livable for campus accommodation standards. Up next are Tembusu College and NUS College Cinnamon Wing. Similar to CAPT and RC4, these two RCs are built together and share the same canteen. Tembusu College has a focus on global affairs, while Cinnamon Wing, being part of the NUS College program, gives students a multidisciplinary education with global exposure. There isn't much to go by with pictures, similar to the other RCs, but they are of comparable sizes. Rather, Cinnamon Wing actually has a floor plan available that shows us the size of an average RC room, which is 7.8 square meters. Pretty cool info. Finally, NUS College West Wing. There is very little known about it other than the fact that it will be located in Yale NUS. Facilities like the canteen will likely be operated by the current Yale NUS operators since there is a difference in the pricing of meal plans compared to other RCs. To stay in RCs, you will also need to be in their respective RC programs. RVRC program for RVRC, Utown College program for CAPT, RC4 and Tembusu, and NUS College program for Cinnamon Wing and West Wing. Registration for the Utown College program has already closed for the cycle, and registration for the RVRC program will be closing in about a day. There is overwhelming demand for these rooms as you can see in this chart, and those numbers were last updated half a month ago. Registration for the NUS College program is still ongoing though until the 31st of May. To register for RCs, you'll need to answer a few short answer and essay questions and then pass an interview where they may ask for further elaboration on the essay responses. So good luck on that. The next type of campus accommodations are student residences. It's basically just a room for you to stay in. Nothing more, nothing less. They are located quite far apart. First off is Utown residences located, of course, in Utah. These were mainly reserved for graduate students, so they weren't open for undergrads until the global lockdowns occurred and freed up some rooms. As the world gradually recovers though, I believe that they will eventually return to being only for graduates. It is the only shared apartment style room offered for student residences. There is a small kitchen with a microwave and a fridge alongside a lounge in the common area. The rooms are quaint, there is adequate cabinet and shelf storage, and also plenty of desk space. Overall, it is a nice place to be in if you can get it. The other student residence is Prince George's Park Residences, also known as PGPR. It is a bus stop away from Kent Ridge MRT, and it is an absolutely massive place that walking its entire length could take a good 10 to 15 minutes. The 30 blocks of apartments houses both foreign and local students alike, and even students that come from overseas exchange programs during their summer and winter breaks. Serving it are two canteens and a 24-7 mini-mart that is located within the premises. There are three types of rooms here, namely A, B, and C. Type A rooms are all air-conditioned and contain an ensuite bathroom and a sink that is separate from the bedroom by a door. It also has a good amount of storage and desk space. Type B rooms can come with or without air conditioning and contains a sink in the room without any physical separation, so do be careful so as to not splash water all around the room. Other than that, it is slightly smaller than a Type A room but it still has plenty of storage and desk space available. Type C rooms also come with or without air conditioning and it is the most bare bones. They still come with the standard desk, bed and closet. However, the toilets and sinks are communal. You really might want to decorate the place up to make it livelier than a prison cell. It will greatly help your sanity. 
Maybe because BGPR is way too big, NUS has decided to segment the place up and call them houses. With added pastoral care, think of it as a weird mix between a student residence and a hall. Carved right out of PGPR are Pioneer House and the newly formed Lighthouse. Pioneer House takes up blocks 20 to 25 and was formerly known as PGP House when it was carved out of PGPR around a year ago. Meanwhile, Lighthouse takes up blocks 26 to 30 and will welcome its first batch of applicants this upcoming semester. Now that we have talked about all the different hostel options available for stay, we need to talk about the cost. This includes an application fee of 25 SGD plus tax, an acceptance fee of 200 SGD per semester, and a mandatory meal plan for halls and residential colleges. You can also apply to bring a mini fridge into the hostel for an added 120 SGD plus tax for a full year, and air conditioning is prepaid, costing around 30 cents an hour. Hostels may also charge some miscellaneous fees. I have added all the mandatory costs up to calculate the total cost for applying to different hostel accommodations for a year and compiled it in some nice looking graphs here. Halls are the most affordable option. All of them have the same flat rate of $5,692 for a single room. And with the exception of Shears and Kenridge Halls, double sharing rooms cost $4,327. Residential colleges are the most expensive options at around $7,500 with RVRC being just slightly more affordable than the rest. Shared apartments with exclusive common rooms are more expensive, and NUS College West Wing rooms cost the most at nearly $8,550. Student residences and houses are priced similarly to single rooms and halls, with the sole exception of PGPR Type A rooms costing way more at $8,300. Overall, NUS College West Wing is the most expensive option, closely followed by PGPR Type A rooms. Residential colleges cost almost 40% more than student residences and halls. And if you want the most affordable option, that would be the double sharing rooms in halls. Yusof, Tomasic, and Kev Halls would probably get you the best price performance. By the way, there is a yearly inflation rate of around 3% for all the prices. To explain the mandatory meal plans for halls and RCs, they are plans for residents to have cooked meals in the hostel canteens. Breakfast and dinners are provided on all weekdays, while Saturdays only have breakfast and Sundays only have dinners. Meal credits will be made available on the residences' hostel applications at the start of the semester with one credit corresponding to one meal. Up to three credits can be redeemed per meal, and it could be redeemed for the residents themselves or redeemed for others. The hall meals are extremely affordable, and even the RC meals only cost two-thirds of the price of meals you can find outside of campus. While many say that the food is not nice, it is definitely an improvement over NS cook house meals with the taste being at least half as good as outside food and the large portion sizes will surely keep you full. I've heard that the vendors would encourage residents to redeem all of their credits by the end of the semester by including desserts like ice cream bars in every meal towards the last few weeks. There are also other considerations that one might want to take note of. For one, most of the hostels are located next to forested areas, so residents will hear a lot of this. Trust me, it's way louder in person. Location and distance from campus buildings are another consideration. Certain halls are more favoured by students of certain faculties. For residential colleges, you'd want to choose one with a team that you would like to study on, for that would be the general education modules that you would have to take during the next two years of stay. Similarly for halls, you would want to stay in one with an environment that suits your style, something that you can jive with. Also, multiple CCA commitments can get very time-consuming. They can take up entire evenings, start as late as 11pm, and go on until 3am. Another point would be that RCs are guaranteed a two-year stay with a scheme for year threes to stay with added commitments. However, halls only guarantee freshmen one year of residence and they will have to fight for a few rooms from year two onwards under the residence admission scheme. This is a priority list with the highest priority going to NUS club's executive members, followed by NUS special sports and arts scholars, after which hall residents with lots of contributions, then NUS club's ordinary members, and finally, everyone else. Terms and conditions apply, and if you want to give it a detailed read, here is the link. 
Finally, it is time for the application guide. Make sure you apply during the correct time frame which you can find here. For new undergraduates coming in on August, hostel applications start on the 16th of May. And for those who have signed up for residential colleges, applications for those start on 10th June. Clicking on the apply here link will lead you to the application portal or you can head to the address over here. Log in using your NUSNet ID or NUS application number, then click on undergraduate application on the top bar. Clicking apply on the semester you're applying for starts the process. First, fill in your personal particulars like your student number, name, gender, nationality, and emails and contact info. Next, fill in your next of kin's contact information and declare any serious medical conditions that require extra care. After that is the CV portion where you write down all of your achievements like current and past awards, scholarships and bursaries, participation in CCAs, especially in leadership roles, and any other volunteering work and skills. Do note that you only have 15 minutes to fill it in before the portal times out and work is not saved, so it is best to write it all down in a Word document and copy paste it in. Now you can choose your preferred hostel and room options in decreasing priority, up to a maximum of 3. And also declare on whether you are willing to stay in other hostels if you do not get your top 3 choices. Double and triple check every single detail to make sure that there is nothing wrong with your application. Correct any typos and reconfirm your choices. After you're satisfied with all of that, it is time to pay the application fee of 25 Singapore dollars plus GST, which is set to increase over the next two years. You can pay using the standard options or via a pay now QR code. If you're using credit or debit cards, just fill in all the card details like any other online purchase and voila, you're done with the application. All you need to do now is to wait for the results and if successful, pay an acceptance fee of $200 and you are good to go. If you are unsuccessful, you can appeal using the same portal under appeal process. Clicking on the correct application term will lead you to choose your preferred appeal hostel. You can also choose if you would accept any other hostel offers if there are vacancies and then write down all the reasons why you should be given a hostel room and attach any supporting documents if it helps. Double check all the details, make sure that there is nothing wrong and then click submit. All you can do now is pray. For all of you who are applying for hostels, good luck with that. I know this has been a very long video but the details I provided are non-exhaustive. Do your own research, google the shit out of it, watch dom room tours from other NUS creators, ask on reddit, talk to seniors, just make sure you have as much information as you can to make an informed decision. And after all of that, if you do not like the hostel you're in, you can always end your stay after one semester and apply for the dorms. If you found this video helpful, do give a like and subscribe for more. I'll be posting video guides on other things in NUS over the next few weeks, so stay tuned for that. It's Kai, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.